Typically, a bucket list is a compilation of things you want to do before you die, but why wait till you're dying to start living? I have 25 things I want to do before I turn 25, which means I have less than one year to do it all. Lord knows I've done my fair share of drinking, but when I make drinks, it's normally vodka tonic, vodka on the rocks, vodka on Sprite, there's definitely a pattern. So I decided, I, before I turn 25, I want to learn how to make real mixed drinks, mixed drinks that you can be proud to serve. So today, I'm taking a mixology lesson. I'm here at Walnut Hills Country Club. I'm visiting the Copper Restaurant to take a lesson. I'm lucky enough to take lessons today. I have Adam with me. Thank you so much for letting me come in. Yeah, no Let me study pleasure. under you. Yeah. So how long have you been here for? Uh, I've been here, this is going on my seventh year. Wow. Um, Copper's been around, we're going to have our third year anniversary, I believe, on July 4th. Okay. So um, I was here before Copper came around and uh, kind of stuck around as the new restaurant was uh, constructed and everything. So yeah, yeah, I've been here around seven years. You like being a bartender? I do. I love it. There's, um, there's a lot of control behind the bar. Okay. Um, this is your domain? It is. It is. I'm usually the only one back here. Um, Am so I invading your space right no, now? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> what can we start making today? Is there a signature drink that you'd recommend? Um, yeah, our house drink is actually called the Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule. And it's made in these copper cups. It's been around a long time. They keep your drinks nice and cold because they're good conductors, like everything copper based. So we fill the glass with ice first. Mm -hmm. And I like to use a lot of ice. Um, it makes the drink fuller. Um, the downside to using a lot of ice is that it tends to dilute the drink if it sits for too long. Mm -hmm. Gotta drink quickly. Fly with the motions, right? <laughs> for us, we use Stoli, Moscow, right? Perfect. Amer America's version of Russian vodka. Um, and we use two ounces of it. Now, your typical bar pours somewhere between an ounce and a quarter and an ounce and a half. Okay. Our drinks are two ounces. A little stronger than you know what you're used to, but you know we aim to please it. So. I can't imagine anyone would, would complain about that. Right. Two ounces of Stoli vodka. Right in there with the ice. We have a splash of simple syrup. And that's just sugar and water? Yeah, sugar and water baked together. Okay. And that comes from our kitchen as well. Um, and then we top it with ginger beer. Now this is a Jamaican ginger brew. Ooh. And what it's gonna do is just provide that signature ginger flavor for this drink. And the mistake that a lot of people make when they're making drinks is, you know, they tend to fill these ingredients in glass and the, the drink ends up being built in layers. Well, you don't want to drink a drink one layer at a time, right? These are different flavors, right? Right. Okay. So all I do is mix it together like that. Um, the taste is going to be much fuller if you want to give her a go. Okay. This is a ginger mule? A Moscow mule. Moscow mule. Ooh. Ginger beer is awesome. Yeah, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, I really like it. I think I have a new favorite drink. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when somebody asks you for a drink and you've never heard of it before? Do you just sit there and you're like, yeah, okay, sure, I'll make that for you? You know, and what I've run into um, a lot is a lot of times there's crazy names for a drink that's really simple. Okay. So I usually end up looking it up on Google, like, hey, hold on, I gotta check this thing out, you know? <laughs> but someone asked me for a horse's neck. I had never heard of that drink before, yeah. and it turns out it's just like scotch and ginger ale or something like that. Yeah, that I, simple. Yeah, something really simple. Um, and if I have the ingredients, I'm more than happy to make it for them. I try and go by the book as much as I can, because if I've never made it, I've never tasted it probably, and so I don't know how it's supposed to taste. Yeah. And really aiming to give them that perfect drink, you know, so that they can be happy. But being a bartender, um, if we make a crazy cocktail, you know, we have to taste it to make sure it tastes okay yeah. in some way. And so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take a straw, just dip it in the cup, and then we have that taste at the end of the straw. Make oh, sure sweet. everything's the way it should be. Right, that's how it should be. Every bartender's account. Account is the number of bartender says in his head in order to pour the correct amount of alcohol in the glass. Okay. And What's your count? It's different for every bartender. I tend to count fast. For my for my two ounce count, it's usually eight or nine. Okay. But I count really fast in my head because I'm thinking about many things. Could you walk me through making it old fashioned? Yeah. Can I be your hands? Absolutely. Mm. So we're gonna put it in a low ball glass. Okay. Two oranges. Mm -hmm. 
two cherries. Two cherries. Now, we need sugar cubes. Oranges, cherries. Sugar cube. One sugar cube. Now, because there's just fruit and sugar in there, just add a little simple syrup, because again, we want to make this delicate mush. And you're just gonna muddle that all together. And you're really gonna have to push on that sugar cube. Yeah, just keep going. Gonna balance over here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You made this look so easy, Adam. <laughs> and a lot of times it helps to twist okay. as you go. Oh, as you go. I'm sorry, I'm making such a mess. It's fine. I'll stay in clean. No, we all, we all make messes our first. Are time. you sure? Yeah, it's okay. Fine. Mush those cherries and oranges up. Rinds and all? Yep. That sugar cube is still it's okay. hard as rock. It's all right. Okay. The great thing about the sugar cube is it's going to dissolve inside the drink as well okay. and just release those bits of sugar as they sip the cocktail, right? Nice. We're going to top it with ice there. Because people drink old fashioned so many ways, it's typically their choice of what kind of whiskey, what kind of bourbon do I want. For convenience sake, let's just use bean. Okay. It's a uh, Kentucky bourbon. We'll pour it out into yeah. a jigger first? Yeah, let's pour it in the jigger. Okay. One and a half or one? Let's do one and a half. Am I moving too slow to be a bartender? No. Good? Yeah, that's good. Okay. How many drinks do you think you make on a busy night? On a busy night, at least a hundred. Wow. Yeah, uh, it gets pretty crazy sometimes. Some people would drink it like this. In all of the layers. I would like to break it up. What I usually do is just top it with a little soda water. So we have that okay. soda button. That one? Yeah. I've always wondered what these look like. I've always only been on that side of the bar. Those really help a bartender out. You know, a lot of our mixtures are there. That's good. And for this one, just the way I like to drink it, I do mix it up. And I tend to shake it as well. To help break up the sugar? Just a little bit. Um, that's right. Because <laughs> you've got all this muddled fruit in there. and. If that's providing the flavor in your drink, then I'd really like it to be everywhere instead of, you know, just at the bottom. So you've got this muddled, almost smoothie looking thing. Yeah. It doesn't look dangerous at all, but I know all that is is from beer. Right? And soda water. And soda water. Give her a go. I feel like this could get you in trouble. Yep. It, <laughs> and again, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, you know, it's a very old drink. Can you guess my favorite? Mm, I mean, I would say a mojito, but I'd be wrong. I don't know. Do Wait. you miss it in ginger ale? Really? It's my favorite. Jimmy and ginger. It's a good combo. You can drink those all night long. I feel like if I was a bartender before I came in here, the customers' only options would be like, you know, vodka on the rocks. Shot a tequila, let me open you up a beer, pour you a wine. Now I feel like I could competently definitely make it old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Mojito would take me a few rounds, but I'd be willing to practice that over and over until I get it perfect. Oh, yeah. And then Copper Mule? Moscow Mule. Why can't I get that right? Okay. Moscow Mule. How do you make multiple shots? I see the bartenders and they just drizzle them across the shot glasses. Basically, That's so impressive. it's a lot of math. Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll line up the uh, shot glasses and be like, all right, um, each shot glass holds, I want to put roughly an ounce and a half of liquid in it. Okay. Right? So what we're going to make, and it's delicious, you're going to love it, and you're going to do the honors, is a cinnamon toast crunch shot. It's my favorite cereal. It's, it's you're going to love this shot. Does this have hot jam in it? It doesn't. Okay. But I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> Um, so we're going to put that down, okay. and we're going to ice up the shaker. Ice up the shaker, just scoop it full ice? Uh, you're going to use the scoop though. Yeah. All the way? That's actually good right okay. there. Let's do it. Now we're going to use Captain Morgan. Yeah, right here. And you can actually set that shaker down if you want, we're going to measure out our pour. Um, and we're going to go up to an ounce. One ounce. If somebody else works back here and they throw off your line, does that ruin everything for you? Uh, it doesn't ruin everything. Sometimes it's frustrating. Um, you just pour that right in the shape. Okay. Then we're gonna go over here and grab rum chata. Now this is a rum-based dairy liqueur. Okay. And this is gonna be our other half of the shot. 
So another one ounce of this. Let's do an ounce and a half. Ounce and a half. Ooh, getting wild. Oh wow, it looks like Bailey's. Okay. We're gonna pour that in the shaker as well. We're going to cap that with the uh, low ball glass. We're going to shake it up. Fancy shaking. Yeah. It's all about the presentation. This is what you can do with one hand? Yeah. Okay. Good? Yeah, Keep that, going? That's probably good. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to get the shot glasses as close uh, to each other as we can so they don't trip all over the place. Okay. And you're going to do exactly that. You're just going to open up one end just enough for a string to come out. Oh, so the pressure. Okay, like that? Yeah, sure. That's enough? Work. Yeah, give her a go. Can you do this with one hand? Um, sometimes. All right, start with one and then move to the other? Yeah. Do I have to do that count thing? One, two, three, four? Yeah. Just, okay. Can you tell me when to move? Move now. There we go. And we'll just call it good there. Drop the remnants into the sink. And you'll have to tell me what you think. Cheers! You should be really excited. That tastes like breakfast. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, right? Wow. Yeah. So maybe I won't quit my day job, but in a pinch, yeah. I can definitely check Mixology off the list. Thank you so much. No problem. This Thanks is for awesome. In. Cheers! <laughs> so. I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. Every day, kids <laughs> witness bullying. Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. It might not be Paris, it might not be New York, but something on my list to do has always been to go see a fashion show. So today I'm coming to MSU's Wharton Center to see the apparel and textile design fashion show.
I'm lucky enough to get a behind the scenes scoop with one of the designers who's out today. Janessa, how did the show go for you? The show went fantastic. It, it, this was my first fashion show um, and I couldn't have asked for anything more. What was going through your mind when the girls were walking down the runway? Don't trip <laughs> and go slow. When you were designing the outfits, what was inspiring you? Different things were inspiring me for each of the outfits. You had the Kate Moss heroine heroine. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Love that title. Where did that come from? Well, researching Kate Moss, you kind of figure out that uh, she, her life was sort of wild and crazy oh, and that's what I wanted to reflect inside the design. So, um, And the heroine heroine came from the fact that she did use drugs and that was sort of part of her infamy in the 1990s. Uh, so it's just a nice play on words. Do you have a favorite of the two pieces? Or is that like asking a mother to pick her favorite child? Yeah, that's really hard. Really tough? Um, if I had to choose one, I think I would go for the Kate Moss one. Not that there was more inspiration behind it, but like the story um, was more easily told. Thank you so much for letting us come in and interview. Thank Congratulations you. on your first show. Thank How you. exciting. My first fashion show, your first fashion show as a designer. How cool. up on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org kids will spend eight minutes decorating their little brother brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later two minutes twice a day they have the time Growing up, April Fool's Day was always a day of sheer terror in our household because my brother was the king of pranks. And I'm not talking salt in the sugar bowl, sugar in the salt shaker. We're talking waking up and finding all of your toys taped to your ceiling. We're talking full out pranks where it wasn't safe to eat anything that he gave you that day. Which is why I've decided if I can't beat him, I might as well join him. And I've always looked forward to pulling a prank on someone, and who better than the interns at Home TV. So I have with me today, I'm so proud, my brother Alex is here to help me. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, well, thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. What are we doing today? Well, today we're going to be doing one of the classic examples of an April Fool's prank. One of my all-time favorites. It's going to be the caramel-covered onion. What did you do to the onions first? Well, first off, what we did, we peeled off the first layer of skin so it won't flake off, okay. which is important. So like if you bit into the caramel, it wouldn't just like... Or even before they bite into it, so okay. the caramel's not coming off already. Gotcha. I picked out onions that were similar to apple shape, but we have one apple that's going to be the demo apple. Right. This is what you're going to be eating to show everyone that it is safe to eat these apples. Of course. Of course. To get started, we have... What is this, like 22 ounces of caramel and two tablespoons of milk. We'll melt this together and then we'll start dunking. While that cooks, what are some of the favorite pranks that you've done? Well, growing up I've had a number of <laughs> classic pranks. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> I've been on the receiving end of those. Well, remember what we did to our mom? Uh, uh, no, you did, did to, to mom. mom. Okay. I'm not taking any blame for that. <laughs> That's all you. Well, building a mannequin with a ski mask and putting it in her closet that fell out when she opened the door. Like this. I have never heard the woman scream so loudly before. Can't believe I wasn't disowned. Seriously, I should have killed you after that. I could have been an only child. <laughs> One of your all-time best pranks, best pranks that there's no way you could do the, like today, in today's society. What did you do to your band class in high school? Well, in high school, we were having asbestos removed from certain areas of the school, so I took a plastic sheet, duct taped it all over the wall, and then put the danger asbestos removing sign right on the door. So I got 150 kids out of their first hour band class. And had them wandering in the hallways. If you did that today, you would be expelled. Probably. There's no doubt in my mind, you can't get away with that. No. Why do you like pulling pranks so much? What is it? Well, I'm a very creative person. And this is your outlet? Yes, it's a way <laughs> to use my creative juices in a... Not for good? Not for good, yeah. <laughs> in an evil way. You helped me once with a prank. I, we can't mention it because it's definitely not legal, 
but it was one of the greatest pranks, and that was like the best brother sister bonding that we've ever had. It was, it was like pulling this terrible both prank used our, together. Our minds together to come up with this ultra prank. But Absolutely. We can't say what it is. That'll be for like maybe a web exclusive or something. Oh, our caramel's ready. What I'm concerned about is keeping a straight face. I'm worried that I'm gonna be like tomorrow, be like, hee hee, I brought you caramel covered apples. Like, how do you keep a straight face during all of this? The key to any prank is 100% complete surprise. Complete surprise. Because right. if the people you're trying to prank have any idea that something's amiss here, yeah. you know, it's not gonna be funny at all. I tried to plant the seed today, and I told some of the interns that I was taking a cooking class tonight. So, like, you know, I was Good. thinking ahead of time. Right. So they're primed with the with the story. Yeah, they know that I'm doing something cooking tonight, so it won't be a total surprise when I come to work tomorrow. But I'm just nervous to be like, <laughs> caramel covered onions, I mean, apples. Well, use that excitement as if you actually made caramel covered apples. Okay. So be like, I'm so excited about these apples. About these that they're apples. they're delicious. When I went to Meyer to pick up the supplies, I couldn't find the little dowel rods, and so I had to stop and ask this woman. And I was like, I'm looking for dowel rods, so I'm making caramel covered apples and very clearly in my cart were the onions and she just stared at me and I was like don't worry <laughs> I know what I'm doing not at all all right so it's getting there here you stare here are the muscles of the separation I grabbed some really pretty looking things I have the chocolate covered or the chocolate chips and marshmallows because I thought that'd make it look more appetizing Excellent. right like, you know you would want to eat these things and also what's important is that we're using these white onions. Why white? Uh, white aren't as pungent as, say, red onions. Okay. If uh, we did red onions, they might smell it ahead of time when they're just Through about to eat caramel? it. the Correct. They are a very pungent uh, onion. Okay. Oh, this looks so gross. <laughs> you said to get up on the stick? Right. We might have to make a second coating if it doesn't um, stay on the onion. Okay. Now, in all of your pranking experiences, has mm -hmm. anyone pranked you back? Like, out of anger, out of spite? Like, you got me, I'm going to get you? Uh, or do you oh, always yeah. just come out on top? No, I always, there's always some retributions, which you have to be prepared for. <laughs> so I might be biting off more than I can chew? Well. Because I'm taking on six interns. Okay, well, more power to you. And they are really nice kids, to yeah. be fair. That's why I thought it'd be safe, you know, to prank these guys, because they are nice, right guys? <laughs> Should I start decorating these while they're soft? Do you want to sure. start prettying these up? I thought maybe if I put some marshmallows around the top, they wouldn't necessarily think that it's an onion in there. I had a hard time finding apples that look like onions and onions that look like apples. Those are two fruits and vegetables that aren't meant to be confused. No. <laughs> I hope someday you get pranked. I hope someday somebody gets you good. Is you have it coming. Oh, I do. You have so <laughs> much bad karma up against you. All right, so let me practice. Okay. You be an innocent intern. And I'll be me. All right. Okay. Hi, Alex. Hey, Andrea. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What do you got there? <laughs> um, I had my cooking class yesterday for the show, and I brought in my goods because there's no way I can finish off half a dozen of these caramel-covered apples. Do you want one? Oh, definitely. They look delicious. I know. I made each one of these by hand. The secret ingredient was love. Um, what I want to do is I want to get a really cool shot of maybe like all the interns together and then I want to try and get some good natural sound so like really bite into it. I'm going to hope, you know, maybe the camera will pick up on that crunch noise. Get a good noise. crunch. Good crunch. Sure. So, here you go. How was my delivery? Was that believable? Make sure you have eye contact. Eye contact? Too. I'm yeah. going to be like this tomorrow. <laughs> Eat the caramel covered apple. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Just do it. Hopefully tomorrow when I get the interns before their meeting. I'll be doing one of these. Thank you so much for coming in. Yep, thanks I for having me. owe you dinner for this. Keep our fingers crossed. Oh my god, it's apple chocolate. Wait, come here, Angelica. Wait, I want to be in there. Wait, did you have one already? Are they all gone? Yeah. Brian and I each had one. That's why I brought the extras to you guys. <laughs> But no. So eat them all now, because it, like mine got Ready? old after I took a couple bites. Can you see us all on the camera? And if you can get a nap pop, that'd be awesome. But I'm not expecting it to be perfect. So good. Oh, it's good. Oh, all right. So good. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Mmm. 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 Mmm.
<laughs> I just realized that. I'm, I'm so good. Blue for real. I like oh. unhook my jaw. Now. Oh shit. What is the onion? I'm so mad. <laughs> I just realized that. I'm so good. Blue for real. <laughs> 15 things down, 10 to go. You can chart my progress on Facebook's home TV, Andrea Mantacunas. I think this is my favorite shoot that we've done so far. Mmm, another great drink. Oh. Help with dishes or something? No. Are you sure? I made a huge mess. Can I at least wipe off the counter? You are fine, girlfriend. Don't worry about it. Why are you still eating it? <laughs> Why are you still eating it? <laughs> we are not on good terms. <laughs>